गुड मॉर्निंग लर्नर्स टूडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्शन आफ्टर कंप्लीशन ऑफ दिस कोर्स यू विल बी एबल टू लर्न डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ कॉस्ट थियोरीज ऑफ कॉस्ट शॉर्ट रन कॉस्ट द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन मार्जिनल कॉस्ट एंड मार्जिनल प्रोडक्ट लॉन्ग रन कॉस्ट एंड प्राइवेट कॉस्ट एक्सटर्नल कॉस्ट एज वेल एज सोशल कॉस्ट सो लेट्स बिगिन दिस लेक्चर ना विल स्टार्ट विथ वट इज कॉस्ट सी कॉस्ट इज डिफाइंड इन डिफरेंट मैनर्स फॉर द सेक ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल टेक कॉस्ट एज any expense that is incurred by a producer for making a product or for delivering a services so that it can be provided to the customers now when it comes to economist and accountants both of them have different opinions regarding cost the economists tend to see cost as a mix of explicit as well as implicit cost whereas accountants view is more focused on the explicit aspect and the historical aspects of the cost we will try and understand what do we mean by term explicit cost implicit cost historical cost in the next slide the first cost that we need to understand is opportunity cost see opportunity cost is the cost of next best alternative for one by this we mean that if you have an option of doing let's say mba or going to a job after completion of your undergraduation if you go to a job after undergraduation you will have to leave the option of doing the mba and if you choose to do mba you will have to lose the option of attaining the salary from that job so we'll try and understand what do we mean by opportunity cost let's assume you get a salary of 30000 rupees now the another option that you have is doing mba if you choose the option of doing mba the salary will become your opportunity cost because this is the next alternative that you had and you skip this alternative for attainment of this degree of mba the second concept is of explicit cost let's assume there are four factors of production out of which we are taking into account land labor and capital right for land we are supposed to pay the rent for labor we are giving wages and for capital we are giving interest let's think that the producer is rendering the services from outside vendors for attainment of land labor and capital so the payments that are made to the outer forces or outer farms which will provide us these factors of production is known as explicit cost that means it is the cost that a producer has to pay from his pocket to the outside farm so that he can take the help of these factors of production the another concept is of implicit cost implicit cost is also known as imputed cost or the cost of self owned or self employed resources let's assume you have a shop and you open your own office in this shop so for opening this office what you will do is you will skip the option of using the shop for renting it to someone else so for this shop no doubt you won't be paying any rent to yourself but you will have to skip the option of renting this shop to another one so implicit cost means the cost of self owned resources or self employed resources that you are using or utilizing for your own business then another concept is of sunk cost see sunk cost is the money that has already 
already been spent by the producer and he is not able to recover it later on. For example, for launching a product, you have decided that you will do a marketing research. So for doing that marketing research, you will have to give a set amount of money to the research firm. So that is the money that you have paid. And if the research is done and you get the results, you won't be able to recover that cost even if you don't start that particular business. So that is known as your sunk cost. The another concept is of historical cost. See, historical, by term historical cost, what we mean that it is the original cost of an asset. And this cost is recorded in the books of account. For example, you purchase an asset worth 10 lakh rupees in any given year. So for the sake of calculation, the value of that asset will be counted as 10 lakh rupees. It doesn't matter what the market cost of that asset at present is. For the sake of calculation, for the sake of accounting purposes, we will use the cost at which it was originally purchased. The another type of cost is known as accounting cost. In this, we will try and understand what accounting cost is and what is the difference between accounting cost and economic cost and on the basis of it we will understand the differences between accounting profit and economic profit. See accounting cost is the cost that is paid by the producer to others so that he can render their services. Let's say a producer is buying raw material of worth 100 rupees, a producer is hiring labor at rupees 100 and the producer is hiring machine again at rupees 100. Now all these three are the costs for which the firm has to make payment to others. So the total accounting cost will be equal to 300. But economic cost also take into account the uh, cost that is lost as an opportunity. For example, you open an office for the same business and that office is within your own premise. Let's assume that office if rented to others gives you a rent of 100 rupees. But now you are using this office for your own purposes. So it won't reflect in your accounting cost. But when it comes to economic cost, the economists tend to take into account this cost also so that they can have a clear cut idea of the gains and losses that they make in the production. So economic cost will include all these three costs plus the cost of the office too. That means 300 plus 100 is your total economic cost. So accounting cost takes into account only the explicit cost whereas economic cost takes into account explicit cost plus your implicit cost. From these two costs we get two different types of profit. Accounting profit as well as economic profit. So accounting profit is equal to revenues that is total revenue minus accounting cost whereas economic profit is equal to total revenue minus economic cost. Now if you use this equation accounting profit is equal to total revenue minus explicit cost whereas economic profit is equal to total revenue minus explicit cost minus implicit cost. So if you look the accounting profit and economic profit can be rearranged as economic profit is equal to accounting profit accounting profit minus implicit 
cost. Thus, we can easily understand that in majority of the cases where we are using the own resources of the producer or where there is, there is an implicit or imputed cost, your economic profit is going to be less than your accounting profit. And the difference will be of implicit costs. Now let's move further. Now, we'll discuss the concept of determinants of a cost function. Now see, cost function is not a standard function because it tends to vary from firm to firm within the same industry and from one industry to another industry because there are different factors that tends to affect the cost of production in each and every firm and many a times these factors are individualistic to a firm but for the sake of understanding how these determinants tends to affect the cost function we will represent a simple cost function where c is it is a function of s o p t and other factors where s stands for size of the plant o stands for the level of output that is produced p stands for the price of the inputs that are used in the production process and t stands for the technology now there is different forms of relationship of cost with all these determinants. We'll try and understand that relationship. Size of the plant. See, when the size of the plant increases, the unit cost of production tends to decrease. That is, there is an inverse relationship between size of the plant and cost of production. The reason behind it is, larger the size of the firm, the more efficiency of production can be attained and economies of scale tends to uh, play their role, thus decreasing the unit cost of production. Second is output level. See, output is dependent on the variable cost. As the output increases, the amount of cost tends to increase because you are supposed to purchase raw material, you are supposed to bring the labor, so the total cost will increase with the increase in output level. Then there is the relationship between your prices of the product and cost of production. See, as the price of production increases, that means the prices of raw material, prices of machine, the prices of hiring a labor will increase. That increase in the prices of the production uh, factors will tend to increase the cost of production of the uh, final material and another is your technology see with the technological advancements we can see that the efficiency of production the effectiveness of the production will increase thus the cost of production will go down thus there is an inverse relationship between the cost and the technological progress that the firm makes now, let's discuss short run and long run costs. See, there are two types of time periods or time frames where the production takes place. The first time frame is short run and the second one is your long run. Short run is defined as a time frame or a time period where we are able to vary few factors of production whereas the majority and other factors of production remains fixed or constant. That is, it will have the play role of both fixed factors of production and variable factors of production. Whereas, long run is defined as a time period where all the factors of production can be changed. Thus, we see that in long run, all the factors of production are variable, whereas in short run, there are both fixed factors of production and variable factors of production. This is a table that gives a detailed analysis of different short run costs and their interpretations. We will discuss them one by one. Now if you look in this table, there is units of output, total variable cost, 
total variable cost means the cost of variable factors of production now variable cost is dependent on output as the output increases the amount of total variable cost will also increase then there is total fixed cost fixed cost is a cost that is not dependent on output or it is independent of output by this what i mean is if the output increases the fixed cost will remain unchanged and it is not going to change then is your total cost total cost is sum of total variable cost and total fixed cost then is average variable cost see average cost is calculated by dividing the total variable cost with number of units of output that is it is total variable cost divided by q average fixed cost it is identified by dividing the total fixed cost with number of units of output then there is average total cost average total cost is sum of your average fixed cost and average variable cost and at the last there is marginal cost by term marginal we means additional that is extra cost that is incurred or additional cost that is incurred by enhancing or by producing one extra unit of output is known as your marginal cost its formula is change in total variable cost upon change in quantity will interpret why we have not taken total fixed cost and we have taken only total variable cost in this in few minutes now if you look output is given as 0 to 6 total variable cost is 0 10 18 24 32 50 and 72 so the total cost will be total fixed cost is 30 so the total cost will be sum of your total variable cost and total fixed cost so it is 0 plus 30 30 10 plus 30 40 30 plus 18 48 and so on and so forth so it is nothing but the sum of your total fixed cost and total variable cost if you look as the output is increasing your total cost is also increasing then comes your average variable cost average variable cost is identified by dividing the total variable cost with the units of output it is pvc upon q so when one unit of output is produced it is 10 upon 1 when 18 is produced it is 18 upon 2 that is 9 then 24 upon 3 8 32 upon 4 8 50 upon 5 10 and 70 upon 2 upon 6 that is 12 if you look initially the total variable cost is going down and later on it is increasing now average fixed cost it is identified by dividing total fixed cost with units of output the total fixed cost upon units of output now fixed cost is constant it is 30 so it is 30 upon 1 30 upon 2 30 upon 3 30 upon 4 and 30 upon 5 if you look the average fixed cost is continuously going down and is continuously decreasing then is your total cost average total cost average total cost is nothing but it is the sum of total variable cost and total fixed cost 30 plus 10 40 15 24 10 8 18 7.5 8 15.5 and so on and so forth and at the last there is marginal cost marginal cost is change in total cost of production that is happening because of one additional unit of output production that is it is the change or the additional cost that is incurred in producing one extra unit of output that means let's say marginal cost will be total cost of n units minus total cost of n minus 1 unit now total cost of n will be fixed cost now since fixed cost is constant we will be using fixed cost only fixed cost of n plus variable cost of n minus fixed cost of n minus 1 minus variable cost of n minus 1 now look since fixed cost is constant 30 30 30 30 
this fixed cost will be equal to this fixed cost and it cancels out. So marginal cost is identified as variable cost of n minus variable cost of n minus 1 divided by change in output that is delta q. So it is change in total variable cost upon change in output. Thus we can see that we have used total variable cost change rather than that of total cost change. Now, if you look in this graph, as marginal cost and try and compare marginal cost with average variable cost. Let's compare these two. As average variable cost is going down, that is average variable cost is decreasing, the value of average variable cost is higher than marginal cost. It is 9 here, it is marginal cost is 8. It is 8 and the variable marginal cost is 6. It is 8 and marginal cost is 8. Thus, whenever your average cost is higher than marginal cost, we can see that the average variable cost is decreasing. And when your marginal cost is equal to your average variable cost, your average variable cost is minimum. Now, if you look, this is an inverse of what we have seen in the production function. In production function, when marginal product is equal to your average product, your average product is maximum. So, the graphs of marginal product, average products are mirror images of your graphs of marginal cost and average variable cost. And when your marginal cost is higher than, if you look, it is 18 here and your variable cost is 10, it is 22 and your variable cost is 12. At that point of time, your average variable cost is rising. It was 10 and it was 12. And at this point of time, your marginal cost was higher than your average variable cost. Now, we'll look to the graphs of short run cost. Initially, we will look to the graph of total costs and later on, we will look to the graphs of average and marginal cost. Now, if you look, in this table, your fixed cost is constant. So, it is the total fixed cost line is parallel to your x-axis and it is a straight line and it is continuously constant and it is not varying with the change in output. The second is your variable cost. Your variable cost is zero when the production starts. So it is zero and we can see that with the rise in output, your variable cost is also increasing. 10, 18, 24, 32, 50 and 72. So it is a graph that has positive slope that is cost is rising along with the rise in units of output. It is an upward moving graph. Now, your total cost is equal to total fixed cost plus total variable cost. Now, when the output is zero, no doubt you don't have any variable cost, but at that point of time, we have a cost that is fixed cost. So, the total cost will start from the point where we have our total fixed cost. So at the point where there is zero amount of output, the total cost will be equal to fixed cost and later on it will keep on rising from the point of total fixed cost. Now, after understanding this graph, we'll look to the graphs of average and marginal. Now see, the fixed cost is constant and if you look in this graph, your fixed cost is continuously decreasing. So the graph of average fixed cost is continuously going down and it will become very much nearer to your x-axis. You will see this sort of a graph is known as many a times by the name rectangular hyperbola. Your fi average fixed cost continuously keeps on decreasing 
with the rise in units of production. The second cost is your average variable cost. If you look, your average variable cost initially decreases. This is the graph of average variable cost. Initially it is decreasing and later on it is rising. This is the graph of average variable cost. Initially it is going down and later on it is rising. The third is your average total cost curve. If you look, your average total cost initially goes down and later on it increases. This is the graph of average total cost. See, when the production has just started, the impact of fixed cost is higher and the impact of variable cost is less. So, we will see that the average total cost initially will go down and later on it will shoot up. Last cost is your marginal cost. See, your marginal cost initially decreases and later on it increases. If you look, your marginal cost initially is less than that of average cost and at that point of time your average cost is falling it will cut average cost at a point your average variable cost will be minimum and then it will move upwards so these are the two graphs of fixed cost average and marginal cost curves now let's discuss the relationship between marginal cost and marginal product we can see that the marginal cost is inversely proportional to marginal product. Let's interpret it. Your marginal cost is equal to change in total variable cost upon change in output. We have seen this in the previous slides. Now, your total change in total variable cost is equal to change in units of labor because this is the variable factor of production multiplied by the wages W that are paid to this, these labors. So we can use this total variable cost and replace it in equation 1. So your marginal cost will be equal to wages into change in units of labor divided by change in quantity. Now, your marginal product is equal to change in quantity divided by change in factors of production that is labor. So, if you look your equation 3 and, and compare equation 3 with equation 4, we can see that your marginal cost is equal to, will replace this delta L upon delta Q by your marginal product is equal to wages into 1 upon marginal product. Thus, we can see that your marginal cost is inversely proportional to your marginal product. That means if your marginal cost is rising, your marginal product will go down and vice versa. That was all about your short run cost. Now let's discuss your long run cost curves. See, as we have discussed before, your long run is a time period where all your factors of production are variable. So, in this case, we won't be seeing the role of any fixed cost and we will treat each and every cost as a variable cost. This time period is so long that the firm is able to adjust to the changes in the environment and thus is able to vary its all its input. Now we will try and derive your long run average cost curve from short run curves. Now see, it is assumed that there are multiple short run cost curves that exist within your long run cost curves. Let's assume this is SAC1, this is SAC2, this is SAC3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. 
we are taking for the sake of simplicity we are taking these seven short run cost curves now there are infinite number of small SACs between these SACs that are drawn in the graph so a long run average cost curve is drawn by touching the falling side of these SACs. That means, now look, for the sake of simplicity, we will see that a firm, if working at this point, have two options, either to work at this point or to work in SAC1. So if the firm is working at the LAC firm point, the cost of producing the output is lesser. At this point if you look, if you are working at this point, our cost of production is less as compared to working on SAC1. So we assume that within these SAC1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, there are infinite number of small, small, small SACs with different production functions that exist, thus giving a smooth slope or a smooth curve to the long run SAC curve. Now I'll draw your long run. So it will be drawn by touching the falling side initially and while going up it will touch the rising sides of SAC. So it is also known as envelope curve because it envelops all the SACs that are within the purview of this production function. Like this. The point where your average very uh, long run average cost is minimum is the point where the firm is regarded as an optimum firm. An optimum firm is a firm that works and that produces at the minimum level of long run average cost curve. Now, if you see beyond uh, this optimum point divides the firm into two parts there is one falling side where the cost of production or average cost of production is continuously decreasing with the rise in units of output and there is a rising side where the cost of production average cost of production is rising with the rise in units of output this happens because of two things that is economies of scale and diseconomies of scale now there are two types of economies there can be internal economies of scale or there can be external economies of scale or there can be internal diseconomies of scale or there can be external diseconomies of scale. We will take into account internal economies of scale for explaining this shape of long run average cost curve. Now look, this is assumingly a long run average cost curve. This is your minimum point, optimum point. This is the falling side that is because of economies of scale and this is the rising side this is because of diseconomies of scale. Now we'll understand what is economies of scale and what is diseconomies of scale. By term economies of scale we mean that the benefits that the firm derive as it keeps on producing the larger units of output thus bringing the cost of production down or average cost of production down is known as economies of scale. Whereas this economies of scale means the factors that tend to affect the production function and thus leads to rise in average cost in long run with the rise in output is known as this economies of scale. There are different factors that contribute to economies of scale economies of scale. Now economies of scale may arise because of different factors of production. Sorry, may arise from different factors. The first one is division of labor. By term division of labor, we mean that as the units of labor increases, 
we can divide those labors in doing the work in such a manner that work is broken down to smaller smaller units. Let's take an example. You are supposed to make a chair of wood. Now initially you have only one labor so that labor will do each and every work right from cutting, assembling, polishing the chair. But when you increase the units of labor to two, one labor can be dedicated in cutting the wood. Second can be uh, given the responsibility of assembling and polishing the chair. As the number of units of labor increases to three, one can be given the task of cutting the wood. Second can be given the task of assembling the chair and third will be given the task of polishing the chair. So, as the units of factors of production increases, we see that the division of labor starts coming into picture. And by division of labor, what happens is the productivity of factors of production increases, thus the average cost of production will go down. Second one is indivisibility of factors. In the initial phases of production, the firm will have a larger portion of fixed cost as compared to a smaller portion of variable cost. For example, there is a firm that has the capacity of holding 20-30 labors. In the initial production function, there will be one or two labors who will be working in that factory. As the units of labor increases, we will see that the facility is big enough and it has the capacity of holding more number of labors so the labors will be moving freely. Secondly, if there is a machine that has the production, production possibility of producing 1000 units. Now, for producing 100 units, we will be using the same machine. For producing 200 units, we will be using the same machine. So, the factors in this uh, context that is machine and in the previous context that is room are indivisible. So availability of indivisible factors helps in bringing down the average cost of production. Then is degree of specialization in technology. As we keep on increasing the number of labors or number of variable factors that are used in the production process, we see that we can bring the specialization into practice. Let's take the example of chair making again. Now, if we are increasing the number of units of labor, we can see that as the units of labor will increase, we can use the specialized labor who are well versed in cutting with the woods in doing the work of wood cutting, the people who are well versed in polishing in doing the polishing work and people who are good in assembling the chair doing the assembly work. So by bringing in the specialization part, by bringing in the division of labor part, the per unit cost of production will fall drastically. Then is financial economics. As we keep on increasing uh, the output in long run, the financial economics seep in, thus bringing the economies of scale. And the last one is economies of scope. We'll discuss economies of scope in the next lecture. Then is Dick's economies of scale. By term diseconomies of scale, we mean that those factors that tends to rise the average cost of production when the firm has reached the output level. The first reason is difficulty in management. As the size of the firm increases, as the size of the industry increases, it becomes very much difficult for the entrepreneur and the management to manage it. Thus, this leads to your this economies of scale. Second is, your entrepreneur is fixed and is an indivisible factor. You have a given entrepreneur in a production function. As the output increases, the entrepreneur being fixed is not able to fully dedicate his or her time in each and every activity minutely, thus leading to this economies of scale. Now let's discuss the concept of private cost, external cost, and social cost. By the term private cost, we mean that the expenditures and the financial outlays that are incurred by a company or an organization when they are manufacturing a given product or a service. That means the cost 
that is incurred in labors the cost that is incurred in material the cost that is incurred in paying the rents the cost that is incurred in transportation processes that is all the cost that is incurred for attainment of input so that the production can be taken place or production can be done is known as your private cost it is the amount of money that is paid for all those services all those factors all those inputs that the company requires for producing a given amount of output the second is your external cost external cost is the cost that is associated with the negative aspects that are associated with the production process for example you have a factory that factory is producing some output so the amount of money that you pay for producing the output will be the private cost but the emission that is coming out of the factory the the uh, the smoke from that factory the toxic substances that are emerged from the factory are the part of external cost it is the side effect of the production process and have an adverse effect on the well being of the people and on the environment that is it is the negative things that are associated with the cost with the production process after discussing private cost and external costs let's come to the concept of social cost social costs take into account not only the private cost that is incurred in production process but also takes a good look on the external cost or the externalities that can have an impact on the society and the people and that the society and the people have to bear as an outcome of it for example let's say the factory is causing pollution so the pollution that is emitting out will also be taken into consideration while calculation of the social cost so your social cost is a mix of both private cost and your external cost for weighing any project for weighing any production process we must look into the private cost external cost and social cost so that we make a justified decision there is a concept that is known as marginal social cost marginal social cost is an economic concept that measures the additional expenses that are incurred by the society when a producer is producing the additional units of output it is denoted by marginal social cost is equal to marginal private cost plus marginal external cost if your marginal social cost is higher than your marginal private cost it means that your marginal external cost is positive that is there are negative externalities that are associated with the production process that is your marginal external cost is higher that means the project and the additional production is having an adverse impact on environment so while producing the producer must look into this marginal social cost and must try and contain its production up to a point where the marginal social cost is less than your marginal private cost this is all about your cost of production thank you